Hey, what's going on guys? This is uh, JD Moonen from JDMoonen.com. I am coming at you guys with the Pariah build for the Morrowind patch. Um, the Pariah build is really, really tanky. Uh, it's also a lot of fun. It does a lot of damage. Um, I play tested this build for eight hours yesterday. I did a four hour play test in duels, which I was undefeated out of 30 duels. Um, also, I did a four hour play test in open world Cyrodiil with a eight KDR on a 1vx scale it was a lot of fun it allows you to be extremely tanky it also allows you to put out a significant amount of damage so um what i wanted the idea behind this build was i was so tired of being pigeonholed into heavy armor as a magic dk and so i was like okay how can i figure out how to be as tanky as somebody in heavy armor but also put out the amount of damage somebody does in light armor so i think i've figured out the secret and i want to release that secret with all you guys and it is the pariah so anyways, let's dive into gear, and we're going to go over skills. We're also going to go over CP and stats, so let's do that right now. So diving into gear, we are sitting on two pieces of blood spawn. Now, both of these are going to have uh, full Magicka glyphs on them as well. Also, on the body, we're running five-piece Desert Rose, and three of these pieces are going to be sturdy with two pieces of Impin blood spawn. That's going to give us a total of four Impin pieces and a total of three sturdy pieces as well as what we're running on the jewelry. Now, this is where the build gets interesting. This is where the Pariah comes out. <laughs> anyway, so the Pariah, this is a heavy armor set that is very, very neat. Um, so it's one of the few heavy armor sets that has arcane jewelry. Um, and so what it's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to be really, really tanky. So the reason why I chose Pariah and also Desert Rose was because both of them are going to give us resistance while also giving us health and uh, Desert Rose is going to give us Max Magicka and the increased uh, regen every 4 seconds for the 2408 um, whenever you're getting hit with abilities. So the more people you have on you, the stronger this build is. Keep that in mind. So as we dive into the Pariah, what it does is it's going to give us a max health. Also, it's going to give us physical and spell resistance. While on the 5 piece, it's going to increase our physical and spell resistance based on our missing health. This is where this build gets so fucking strong is the fact that as we keep getting lower... It's going to go ahead and it's going to make us extremely tanky. And I will show you how that's going to work out with our vampire passive as well. Because there's a lot of people on YouTube. I see them whispering. I mean, I see them commenting on a lot of my, my builds saying, oh, vampire is not worth it. Bullshit. Vampire is way worth it, especially with this build. And I will show you guys why. So now for the glyphs on the jewelry, what I'm running is I'm running two spell damage. If you wanted to go ahead and take one of these off and put a reduced um, block cost on there, I would totally understand. I don't think it's worth it because we can get so much block cost reduction out of three pieces of sturdy and our CP tree. It's almost a 50% sturdy. I mean, it's almost a 40% uh, block cost reduction. So, I mean, you don't need much more than that. Now, uh, looking at our third glyph on our jewelry, it's going to be a one cost reduction. Uh, that's all you need, in my opinion. I wasn't having any sustain issues. If you want to run two cost reduction, completely understand with one damage, you're still going to put out a shitload of damage and you're going to have great, great sustain. Now, coming down to our sword and board, we have uh, Shield of the Par 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 Pariah Divines on the front bar. The reason why we have Divines on the front bar, I will explain as soon as we go over Munda Stone. Super, super strong. As you guys know with my other build videos, I like either more sustain or more damage on my front bar. <clears throat> Out of Divines, so I'm going to run a Sharpened Axe. Now, Blade of the Bloody Tusk, guys, you can get this anywhere. It's the only, it, it's a sharpened weapon that is named. They're super cheap. They're like 500 um, there's, there's hundreds of them on the market. Please go out, buy one. Super cheap. Um, on our back bar, we're going to run Defending. Um, and we're also going to run Reinforced. Uh, now, both these are going to have Max Magicka and Chance on them. If you want to run a Max Health and Chance on the back bar, I don't blame you. I like Max Magicka. It's going to increase the damage of my ultimate on my back bar as well. So now, looking at our, our glyphs on our weapons, I've got a whatever glyph on the back bar. I don't use poisons. If you use poisons, that's a totally up to you. I think you're a chode if you do. Um, but yeah, I fucking hate poisons. Everybody who watches my stream or any of my videos knows that. Anyways, looking at the Bloody Tusk, the uh, enchant that we're going to have on this weapon is going to be a weapon and spell damage increase for five seconds. Uh, this is going to stack really, really well with our stats. So I want to go ahead and dive into skills real quick. As we're looking at skills, keep in mind, I would suggest being a Dunmer for a Magicka DK. It's going to give you your Destruction Ancestry, which is going to increase your Flame Damage by 7%. Also, it's going to give you Resistance, and it's going to give you a full 9% increase Max Magicka with a 6% increase to Max Stam. Now, let's go ahead and dive into why 
these passive work so well with this build when it comes to the vampire. So this passive right here is what makes this build so OP. So as our resistances are getting higher in light armor, so is our undeath. Our undeath is getting reducing the amount of damage we're taking. So we're just getting tankier and tankier and tankier the farther we go under 50% health. So keep in mind with this build, um, if you want to sit at, you know, 25 percent or 25,000 health you want to add a couple of hakeji runes on there by all means please do it um i can run with uh, full max magicka glyphs i like to maximize my damage as much as possible but that's because i can mitigate no problem on our front bar we're going to be running flame lash burning embers um engulfing flames for duels uh when i'm in open world cyrodiil uh i like to fight out numbered a lot so i'm going to poke in the zerg so i run talons it gives it gives me the ability to los even though Talons aren't performing that well this patch because of the dodge roll buff. That's okay. Uh, we are running fossilized on that front bar as well. And mage light, um, inner light. I know a lot of people don't see me run inner light um, on the front bar, but with this build, it is crucial to run inner light on the front bar. It's going to give us more damage. It's going to knock our max magicka up to over 38,000 on the front bar, along with increasing the damage to all of our skills. Now we're running ferocious leap on the front bar as well. Um, now, this is going to be really, really strong with this build, and I will explain why it's going to be our execute, basically. Um, and I've had it crit for 21k on a player last night. It was super funny. Uh, it was a one-shot. It was great. Anyway, so uh, Mage Light 2, it's going to also give us our ability to proc uh, Wrath of the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Might of the Guild on our front bar, while also giving us our spell critical as well. On the back bar, we're running Coagulating Blood. It's going to be a super big heal with this build because our crit's so high. Super, super nice. Igneous Shield on the back bar as well. Uh, we want this for Stamina Sustain and also our Major Mending along with Volatile Armor. This is going to... I'll show you why this is crucial to the build as well. You'll see how, how much resistance we actually have on our front bar with this active. Um, now, Elusive Mist. Uh, if you don't run this, you're retarded. I think you should run it on a Mag DK because it is super... Super strong. It allows you to LOS, group people up, and drop meteors on them. Um, now, we're running Structured Entropy on the back bar. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to get more health on our back bar. It's going to give us a bigger heal. It's going to also allow us to proc Mind of the Guild for our Shooting Star. Um, also, keep in mind with Elusive Mist, this is going to... It stacks with the build too. So, as our health is getting lower while we're in Elusive Mist, we're taking 75% less damage. Um, on top of taking 75% less damage, we're also getting a 33 increased less damage from undeath passive and all of our resistances are going up as well. Super, super strong. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. And I know our, our Magicka recovery is disabled while in mist form, but since we're wearing Desert Rose, it procs while we're in mist form. So we can sit there and mist form around and we're getting Magicka back too as well. So that's why it is super, super OP with this build. Now, let's dive into stats. So, as we're looking at stats real quick, we have 38,000 on the front bar, 24.2 thousand health on the front bar, and our stamina is 15,000 on the front bar as well. We're sitting at 729 magicka recovery, which is just fine. We don't need to be any higher than that. Uh, 195 health recovery, which is kind of shit, but that's because we are a vampire. So, we got to get used to that shit health recovery. 707 stamina recovery as well. Uh, that's a decent spot, especially when we're in Lucid Mist. That uh, stamina is going to be, the stamina bar is going to be going up. It's going to allow us to dodge roll once we get out of Mist Form. Now, our spell damage, 1683. I know a lot of people are going to be like, man, that's fucking low. No, it's not. Not with this build. We're sitting at 41.9% crit. Okay. And the reason why this is okay is because this build is going to allow us to run the shadow. So, the reason why Divines is crucial on that shield on the front bar is because it's going to increase our damage from the shadow, um, which is crucial because we have what most would consider as low damage. Um, so, since you would consider it low damage, that's why we need high crit. So, our high crit is going to hit really, really hard. Anyways, um, so look at these resistances. Unbuffed, okay? Unbuffed full health, 26,000. Spell resistance. This is the same amount of spell resistance you're going to get from having heavy armor on the front bar. Now, our physical resistance is 18k. It's just a little bit less than heavy armor. Now, let's see what happens whenever we go bam and hit that buff up and then go back to it. Look at them now. Almost at cap for spell resistance and we're sitting at 24,000 physical resistance. Guys, this is huge. We are in heavy armor now with volatile armor up. 
with wall tile armor up, we are in heavy armor in light armor, <laughs> if that makes sense. So that's where we're sitting at with this build. Um, now, our spell penetration on the front bar is going to be 7,500. Super good spot. Um, I like that, in my opinion. Now, like I said, we are running the shadow. I do run tristat food as well. Um, also, for my potions, I'm going to be running tristat potions. I would suggest this. If you don't run tristat potions, you're probably doing it wrong. If you want to run immovable, you can. I think they're shit. Uh, but if you want to run them, that's totally up to you. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and finish looking at stats real quick. So, our stats are going to be nice. and I'm not going to buff up and spell damage. It's kind of whatever. Um... You'll see for yourself. Just put the build on. It, it hits It hits like a fucking truck. Anyways, uh, so I want to go ahead and buff up real quick on the back bar and show you our resistance stats on the back bar. Look at these. We are over heavy armor at this point, even buffed up. Buffed up heavy armor is is a barely hitting cap on spell resistance. And, I mean, we're just like right, right under heavy armor with buffed up. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous like how tanky you are in this. Now, keep in mind... As we start losing health, as we hit 50% health, this number goes to cap, okay? This number goes to cap. This number goes over cap, and we are just... Uh, it, I don't care if you're wearing spinners. I don't care what the fuck you're wearing. It is so hard to take you down. You will see. It is extremely fun. So, let's jump into CP. So, since this build, since we're really tanky, our CP's changed quite a bit. Uh, since we're not wearing heavy armor, we took points out of Spell Erosion, and we are sitting in Bless now for that extra 8% healing. Uh, 56 into Elfborn because we're running the Shadow, and also because we have such high crit. This is crucial to the build. Okay, so also taking a look at Elemental Expert. Uh, we have 10% Elemental Expert. That's going to give us a full over 120 points in here, which is going to give us our, our Vengeance. It's also going to give us our spell precision, which is going to increase our spell critical. This is crucial to the build. Also, it's going to give us our foresight and our arcane well for when we kill people. We get that 3,700 that 3700 max or magicka back. That is huge. Uh, we run 56 into Master at Arms. We took those points out of Thaumaturge because Exploiter is just not worth it this patch. Master of Arms is going to give us a 20% increased damage on all the initial hits of all of our abilities. So... Uh, Thaumaturge, we're going to put 23 in here to give us that extra 10% on our dot damage. Now, looking at Ironclad, we are sitting at 20% on Ironclad to mitigate what most people are putting into Master at Arms. So, we're going to run 56 points into Ironclad. Also, we are sitting at 53 points in Resistant. Now, guys, if I'm going too fast on CP trees, please feel free to pause and you'll get a nice freeze frame of what I am doing in my CP tree. Um, so, the reason why we're running... 53 into resistant this patch is because we are only running four in pin on the body We are no longer sitting at full five in pin. So this is crucial to this build. You definitely want 53 into resistant um, While 53 in, in this um, now since this tree took such a fucking nerf. It's kind of whatever um, Also, I mean so I only put five percent in physical and elemental especially with this build You don't need more than that because you're at cap anyways on resistance. So it's kind of like fucking whatever um, thick skinned is also what we're looking at here. We're putting 20 points in here. It's uh, for that 9% um, or reduced damage from dots. Now let's go ahead and jump over here. One more time. I want to go over these. So we got invigorating bash going to give us a, ni a nice 20% chance to heal. Uh, now there is no cooldown on this bash. Um, also we are going to be looking at when we roll dodge, we get increased physical and spell resistance as well. Um, and we're going to be getting a nice little, uh, heal whenever we take critical damage. Now, this is going to be crucial with this because our crit is so, our crit resist is so high. So when we take that critical damage, it's going to be like, whatever, who cares? Our resistance is so high. Um, and we're just going to be getting a nice little heal. <laughs> so it's going to be healing us for like a quarter of the damage that's being done to us. Now, uh, we are running 43 into quick recovery. Um, the reason why we're doing that is because we are not in heavy armor anymore. Um, so this is crucial to stack with our blessed passive. That's going to give us almost stacked with blessed is going to give us almost 20% healing. Um, now let's go ahead and dive into warlord. Uh, so this is why I have 56 in a warlord since we're not in heavy armor anymore. We're not getting a really good constitution stamina increase. So 20% into break free. We definitely want. Also, we're only running 43 in Arcanus. It's kind of whatever. We don't, it's not really that important, especially since we don't run, run that high recovery anyways. Um, 
Also, when we come over here and we're looking at Shadow Ward, we have 20% Shadow Ward for that extra block cost reduction. This is crucial to the build since we're in light armor and we're running three pieces sturdy. It's going to give us almost 40% block cost reduction. This is huge. Um, also, when we're looking at tumbling, we ideally you would want 20% here, but since I can only get uh, 19, that's fine. Um, but so we're running 55 in a tumbling. So. That's CP tree, guys. Um, I hope you guys really like the build. I hope you have a lot of fun in it. It's super tanky. It does a shitload of damage. On top of that, um, you just man, you can you can fight so many people, and the sustain is super super good. So, anyways, that is the Pariah build for Morrowind patch. If you guys like it, uh, please. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit me the subscribe at the bottom of the YouTube page. And also come check us out on JDMuna.com. All of my build videos are on there along with a lot of my friends. Uh, Zionite's build videos are going to be on there as well as True Legend's going to be putting a Sork video. And I have one Truth's uh, built some of his build videos on there as well. And also don't forget to come check us out on Twitch. I'm there every Monday through Friday stream at 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Central Standard Time. At least 1 a.m. Uh, sometimes I go to 4 so come check us out, and don't forget, like I said, to subscribe at, to the YouTube channel. Thanks, and I will see you guys in the Pariah build out there in Cyrodiil. Y'all have a wonderful day.